it's Wednesday so there's another Wild Wednesday nature video coming your way. Today I hope to teach you a new word. Now most of you are probably familiar with a carnivore as a meat eater and you might know that an herbivore likes to eat plants. You may have heard of an omnivore that's an animal that likes a little bit of everything. And then there's also a creature called a detritivore. That's something that likes to feed upon decaying organic matter. So some old wood, a pile of leaves that fell off the tree, mulch that you might put around your shrubs, maybe feces from an animal, or even carrion, a creature that has died. All of that is detritus, and detritivores might like to eat that. We're talking about a millipede. There are globally over 13,000 species of millipedes, but the one that I find here a lot in Audubon Woods is called the American Giant Millipede, Narcius Americanus. And that's the one I wanna look at today because I think they're fun. Now millipedes belong to a group of arthropods called the myriapods. And myriapod actually means many legs, which of course millipedes do have a lot of legs. Myriapods include both the centipedes and the millipedes. And a lot of people get centipedes and millipedes mixed up. A centipede actually has one pair of legs per body segment and millipedes have two pairs of legs per body segment. A centipede also has a modification that allows it to give a poisonous bite to whatever it's preying upon, as it's actually a predator. Millipedes, however, are peaceful vegetarians. They are going to um, crawl and dig their way through the soil, um, burrowing through the uh, decaying matter on the forest floor and eating as they go. Now their mouth parts can kind of nibble a little bit, but they're not strong enough to pierce your skin. So you're not going to be bitten by a millipede. Now there's not a whole lot of uh, enemies that a millipede would have. Occasionally a, a skink, which is a kind of lizard, might eat a millipede or perhaps a, an occasional bird. But with that hard exoskeleton uh, surrounding their bodies, they're pretty well protected. There is another uh, creature which I did discover likes to feed upon millipedes, and that's a glow worm, as you'll see in this picture. Now, if you happen to find a giant millipede in the woods, it is safe to pick it up. Remember, they're not going to bite you. Their many different legs are uh, going to feel very interesting on your skin as each leg has its own little claw that's attached to help it move around and grip surfaces a lot like Velcro. If a giant millipede feels threatened, it has two main defenses. First of all, it may just curl up into a tight coil thereby protecting its softer underpart and its legs. The second way it may take care of itself is by emitting what's called a repugnatory secretion. That's a fancy way of saying it might spray out a chemical compound at you. They are equipped with benzoquinone, which is a chemical that could actually create a, a mild skin irritation, maybe even a mild chemical burn. Although I've handled them many times and I've not been burned, it does discolor your skin for a while. Uh, it comes out bright mustard yellow, and then wherever it is on your skin, it fades to purple, and then fades to a dark brownish red, and it may be there for several days. There are other species of millipedes which emit a hydrogen cyanide but not the giant millipedes. 
Millipedes are usually considered nocturnal, so they would be active mostly at night, though we do sometimes get a chance to see them after a recent rain. They may be out and about. If you watch them closely, their locomotion is aided by all of those legs, of course, and they kind of undulate in a, a wave pattern, which you can see in the video of them crawling. And if you look closely too, they do have antennae on the front of their heads, and those antennae are actually tasting and feeling the area around them. So look around your yard, roll over a couple of logs. Can you find any millipedes in your neck of the woods?